Laura. As the leader of the only political party in the UK to openly and actively champion equality and human rights for boys and men, justice for men and boys and the women who love them, I was disappointed to learn that I didn't merit a mention in your recently published book, Men Who Hate Women, or as I've repurposed it, Men Who Hate Feminism. Calling for people like me to be prescribed as domestic terrorists. Such a glaring omission, despite the fact that you went into some depth about my speech at Messages for Men 2018, is hardly surprising given that by your own admission, you didn't actually take the time to actually talk to any of the men and women that you have chosen to so grossly misrepresent in your latest attempt at young adult fiction. Indeed, I would go so far as to say that your very noticeable attempt to airbrush the significant role that women have to play in the men's human rights movement says as much about you and your attitude towards women as it does about your obvious disdain and hatred of any man who doesn't agree with you and obediently hang on to your every single word. Your extreme internalised misogyny is showing, Laura, Perhaps you should hand yourself in. Honestly, some of your convoluted conspiracy theories and fanciful claims about having infiltrated the manosphere are so ludicrous that it almost seems rude to pick them apart. But when you start comparing the sort of men and boys who stand beside me with the sort of men who commit murder and mass atrocities, well, I guess someone has to shine a spotlight on what a malicious, mendacious little mean girl you have so clearly shown yourself to be. Just by way of example, did you know that one of those nasty little quotes you cherry pick and claim to have stumbled upon while bravely infiltrating incels is actually so old that it dates back to a time when you were still pursuing a career as a professional actress, and indeed so famous that it has been voted the seventh dumbest thing ever said in the entire history of the World Wide Web. Presumably you do, Laura, given all of your extensive research. But I have to say, it struck me as an odd choice to start a book about your personal descent into the vast underworld sewage system of its extreme online misogyny. More cynically minded people than me might be tempted to think that you made the entire thing up. But never mind all that, Laura, or the, I have to say, rather unconvincing claim that you briefly talked to a grand total of one person remotely associated with the men's human rights movement before throwing us all under the bus in your hate crime of a book. Let's instead talk about your disdain and dismissive attitude towards the concerns that, again by your own admission, have been voiced by the children up and down this country. Let's talk about the deeply disingenuous and patronising advice you have to offer their mothers. Mothers like me, Laura. How dare you tell us that the only thing we have to do to help protect them from false allegations of rape or domestic violence is quite simply to teach them not to rape or domestically abuse. And how dare you tell young boys that they have a 0.0002% chance of experiencing a false allegation in their lifetime. Seriously, sweetie, you should step out into the real world a little more often than you clearly do. Which is why I am inviting you to take part in a good, old-fashioned, open, honest, adult and public debate about some of the claims you have made about men and women and mothers and young boys in your book. Let's talk, woman to woman, Laura, about the best way to build a future for our children and how to protect our sons from the sort of women who hate men and are prepared to lie about them for their own financial gain. Unless, of course, that subject strikes a little too close to home. 
I'm ready to talk, Laura, anytime and anywhere. Although obviously, I rather suspect that you don't remotely have the balls. Because that's the thing about mean girls, Laura. I tend to find that when you call them out on their actions and all of their malicious, gossipy words, they inevitably, immediately, always run away crying, usually straight into the arms of the nearest patriarch.